Well, my brothers and sisters, it's been a long time since I've had one of these bishops' moments. Uh, life has been a little crazy, and, and crazy <laughs> for all of us. And in the uh, intervening weeks, uh, in fact, just the other day, we began our beautiful season of Lent, the season of, of transformation, the season of, of reparation, this season of, of fasting, of, of penance and penitence. There's a beautiful story from the life of Michelangelo about uh, how God works on us, how day by day, uh, just one, literally one moment at a time, God is constantly working on us. And the story goes like this. He was sculpting uh, an image uh, out of this huge block of marble. He was sculpting an image of a, of a beautiful horse. And he's working on it in his studio. He's got his chisel and his hammer. He's almost finished, but he's still working on it. And a little boy happened to stumble into the studio, and he looked at that, that amazing, amazing statue, almost finished, he turned to Michelangelo and said, how did you know there was a horse inside there? And, and Michelangelo said, well, I took my chisel in one hand, my hammer in the other, and I started to chisel away everything that wasn't a horse, and here it is. And isn't that how God operates? Isn't that how God works on us? He chisels away, day by day, one moment at a time. He chisels away everything that is not true, everything that is not beautiful, everything that is not good. And we have our part to play in that. It's so, so beautiful that God allows us to do that. When we go to confession, we allow God to work on us, to chip away at anything that doesn't belong in our, our heart, in our soul. When we receive communion, it's again that that wonderful moment of communion with God and with each other where he chips away again and again. We have other moments like that in our life. I was so moved this past Ash Wednesday as we uh, initiated a very different way of receiving the ashes and how the ashes were to be sprinkled on the top of our, our head as opposed to having our foreheads marked in that very obvious and, and clear sign. What moved me was when people came forward to receive their ashes this, this year, they made a very, very holy, a very reverential bow. And then I would sprinkle the ashes on, on top of their head. But it was such a, a, such a sign uh, and symbol of reverence uh, to me. It, it was so beautiful. So we, we might keep this, brothers and sisters, a, as an option. <laughs> Maybe we'll have both options next year, this or this. And I'll have some ideas about how to make that really, really easy. But we've engaged in this time of preparation. We've engaged now in this, this time of change. There was a powerful message the day after Ash Wednesday that comes from long ago, from over 1,500 years ago, from a man named Leo, Pope Leo. In fact, the very first Pope Leo, also known as Leo the Great, for lots of reasons. One of the reasons was a story I remember from my childhood, uh, learning at, at a Catholic school, and my beautiful, beautiful teacher, Sister Teresa Clare, talking about the life of Saint Leo the Great, and how he turned away the barbarians from the gates of Rome. Attila the, Attila the Hun, uh, this uh, notorious character with his army, was going to destroy Rome, was going to sack Rome. And Pope Leo the Great went outside the gates, and stopped him. Uh, amazing story. He wrote a number of sermons, and it's amazing that we have some of them. I want to read just a small part of one of them. A special note of the Paschal Feast is this. The whole church rejoices in the forgiveness of sins. It rejoices in the forgiveness not only of those who are then reborn in holy baptism, because they're preparing for that, RCIA, uh, but also those who, who are already numbered among God's adopted children. That's most of us who've already been baptized. And Pope Leo continues, Initially, men are made new by the rebirth of baptism, yet there is still required a daily renewal to repair the shortcomings of our mortal nature. And whatever degree of progress has been made, there is no one who, who should not be more advanced. All must therefore strive to ensure that on the day of redemption, no one may be found in the sins 
of his former life. So, Lent is about letting go. Lent is about leaving some things behind. And as Pope Leo indicates, as humans, we have a tendency not to let go. I've got my favorite sins. They're almost like friends, but they're bad friends. And I'm, I struggle letting them go. I'm letting go of other things. Uh, most of us are. I accepted what's called the Lenten challenge that was given by the beautiful women I work with in, in my office, uh, the chancellor, our receptionist, and also the, uh, the secretary for our vicar general, all three of them, uh, challenged me to participate with them in the Lenten challenge. It's called the No Junk Food Challenge. So here's what we're all giving up. <clears throat> no chocolate, no candy, no biscuits or cookies, no cake, donuts or muffins, no pastries, no white bread, no chips, no fast food, no soda, no ice cream. I added one more. No fun. <laughs> but you, you know what, my brothers and sisters, I'm not bragging, but this is easy for me. It might be easy for you to give those small things up. And it's beautiful to do that. It's, it's a reminder. It, it creates an artificial hunger uh, so that we are reminded of the deeper hungers of our hearts, that we hunger and we thirst for God's presence. We hunger and we thirst for God's love. See, those things are easy for me to give up. It's harder for me to give up my, my sins. It's harder for me to set my ego aside. It's harder for me not to, to want to uh, get back at someone, to, to seek revenge at, at someone. It's harder for me to do that. That's the real fasting that I need to do. Brothers and sisters, I, I suspect there might be some real fasting like that that you need to do. We will strengthen each other by this example that we give, by the sacrifices we embrace, uh, by that artificial hunger that we create that uh, will help us to satisfy the deeper hungers of our, our heart and our soul. So I'm asking God to strengthen you in this Lenten season, in your resolve, and, and I hope that that it's a, a wonderful, wonderful time for all of us for renewal in the Spirit, renewal in God's presence, renewal as we prepare to welcome new members in, into our church in the upcoming Easter Vigil and Easter Sacraments. God bless you and those you love always and in every way.